Yeah, I and th- how, how many books have you written now? I think I'm on number 43, which I oh. need to finish. Oh, my. 43, and, what's your latest one? Well, uh, I, I just finished another one with Alamo. Of course, last year, you know, I wrote Passover Prophecies, and then we wrote uh, Rekindling the Altar Fire. Mm-hmm. And then uh, Alamo and I just finished a new book called The Signet Ring. Mm-hmm. Oh, and right. how we're becoming a signet people in the earth and that it really is a very good book and then i'm finishing a book for charisma on perspective how we can see our future oh and when will that because come out? that oh. is really the key and in the midst of everything that goes on we lose sight now i want to say this I probably would have never written a book had it not been for you guys. So, uh, you know, sometimes I bless you so much for that. Other times, I don't know how I feel. <laughs> yeah, actually, one time Chuck said that, you know, when when uh, he would come and, and uh, be alongside us in the ministry that, you know, he blamed us for his hair turning gray. You uh, know? Silver. 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 Well, silver. it was You're gray. gray. We don't, we don't do gray. We silver. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, but check, uh, we could reminisce uh, all day, but just to uh, uh, share with us, you know, uh, I've heard a little bit of what the Lord is saying. Now, some of you say, well, what we're talking about the word for the year. Well, this is the Jewish New Year. Mm-hmm. And listen, it, we want to get on God's calendar and God's timetable. And many years ago, you know, as we were sharing about this, of course, Chuck has been a pioneer of setting us on God's timetable. Uh, one thing that happened was uh, we, we've gotten on the Roman calendar. And I don't say we have to stop being on the Roman calendar. But the point is, and we want to be on a biblical cycle. And Chuck it's allowed us to be that. So this is a, a new year in the Jewish calendar. Tell us about it. Well, and it's important that all of you out there, we understand that, uh, you know, our calendar that we uh, abide by uh, here in this nation or whatever nation you're in, really, it can coincide with our covenant calendar. That's the way I want I want us to look at it. When uh, when Mike was saying about Iskar prophets, most prophets don't read the word in time. Mm. Uh, when God, uh, when the spirit of the Lord visited me uh, in the beginning, when I was 18, he visited me for three days and he revealed himself as the God of Israel and then revealed the covenant that he had made with his people and some way or another, uh, the first scripture ever sp- he ever spoke to me was, in the midst of my loss, he took me to Proverbs 3 and said, if uh, you will trust in me with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding and give your first fruits, I will uh, heal your body and I will also fill your barns again. Mm. Well, I had to, I didn't know what he meant by first fruit. So once I started really from the time I was 18 on abiding by that word, it opened up the word of God to me in time, the Shabbat, the uh, first fruits, which is a monthly celebration where we really, and it goes all the way through the word of God. It's not Old Testament. Mm -hmm. A lot of people get hung up with tithing where the Lord even wanted us to learn to seek the kingdom first, and mm-hmm. then he would add everything to that. So mm-hmm. it's just been a, been a way of life for me. And once you see the word and how it is written around harvest, it was meant for us to keep a harvest mentality. And mm-hmm. I think, guys, that's what we've lost. I, I, mm-hmm. I actually think you can get so in church and be a part of building the church that you lose the concept of kingdom harvest. Now, wait a minute. Just unpack that just a second. Because they don't at Glory of Zion. They don't lose that. What do you mean by harvest mentality? Well, remember the whole word is written. So we move from harvest to harvest to harvest. Mm. And then, of course, once Yeshua came, once the Lord came, once Jesus came to us, and we uh, exchanged our life for his, we're grafted into that movement. 
Well, what, what, remember what he said. He said, uh, lift your eyes unto the harvest. It's white now. And so everything we do revolves around preparing for the harvest that he's bringing to us because in the end, there's this great final gathering that mm. occurs. And if we don't have a mentality for harvest, I don't think we see the way that God's gathering all the time. But let me say this. Some of you, there are things you could be doing, but you have gotten paralyzed. Yeah. And you cannot see what to do. But there's some very practical things you will do in your life that are going to actually open up a sense of peace, open up a sense of uh, protection. Mm -hmm. But from before this, you have not been able to see. But this is what the Lord says. I'm going to give you eyes to see. You're going to know what to do. And it's going to surround your family. It's going to change the atmosphere. It's going to bring a refreshing. It's going to bring a joy. And I feel like even as, the, as we're, we're returning, we are returning to the foundation, redigging our own wells. Some of you had, you know, did, had in years past said, well, I'm going to possess my inheritance. There are things stolen from my family mm -hmm. line, but I, I'm going to grab it. You, but we... You know, some of us have forgotten about doing that or teaching others how to do it. But now is the season for a new understanding of how to war, but not only how to war, but how to build what you need to do to secure your surroundings. Just amazing. Just amazing for what the Lord is saying to us. And the other thing is, when Cindy said that to all of us, uh, he's going to give you new strength to build. Yes. We've been worn out by a lot of what's been going on. And the yes. enemy would, as Mike was saying, would love to change your times and seasons. God is going to give you new strength to build. Just ask for it. He's going to bring it down. Strength means the power to withstand attack. You're going to be able to quit fearing the wars ahead. He's going to impart to you. He's going to give you new strength he's going to cause you to not only have the strength to resist, but the strength to build. Wow. Uh, you know, Cindy, um, it's interesting that I, I really believe for all of you, this is a season where you also need to take a fresh look at your surroundings, a fresh look at the, the things that you have been given to steward the property for us, because I think God's going to give you some fresh ideas about what could be done that will delight you. For, for us, for example, when we acquired the house that we have, uh, there was a big picture type window that led uh, from our master suite out onto a patio. And I thought to myself, well, that's great, but I would love to have some double doors that lead out onto the patio because I could see a future where double doors, be some double beautiful doors. spring morning <laughs> and you can just open the doors, fresh, cool air looking out over it. And then the other thing was when I was not just repairing the fence, God said, put a gate there, ah, put a gate it. there, a new gate. And, I, and for you, I mean, let me make this more practical. God's going to show you some things you need to do to, uh, as you're, as you're restoring your altar, altars release revelation. And God's going to show you some new things to do. Wow. Even your property to say, I'm taking a fresh look at what I'm to steward, and it needs some adjustments that will, will lead me into a better future than I would have had if I had just left it as is. Oh, wow. Well, check that final thoughts. So, <laughs> so awesome. So he's, awesome. Been, he's so full of revelation. <laughs> I mean, honestly, it's just amazing. Final thought, build your house for the future. Yep. Get yep. ready. Call in your harvest call in your harvest it does not matter how small you think your portion are it is you have a portion call in that portion now amen, amen. well thank you so much for joining us what I, a delight i love you guys i love you guys and it's good we're not together all the time we stay up in the heavenlies all the time and all those <laughs> things you prophesied 
we have to go do down here. <laughs> well, not only we that, We have though, a big job. <laughs> when, when he said a little earlier, oh, I wish we had more time that I would unpack this. Chuck, we want to get you back because I think that you tapped into something that is very helpful to the people or would be very helpful to them. Because even, even though you're an Issachar prophet, you also have the ability to unpack the revelation in a way that will practically take people into their future. Yeah, and the and the Global Spheres building. Yeah. Listen, if you have not been totally. to any of Jack's meetings, you have to go. I, I don't have, I, I can't explain to you. Yeah. I don't have words what goes on in the glory there, but you need to come, you know, you can just go on Glory of Zion and check this out, you know, or whatever. Uh, there's so much revelations yeah. you can learn about first fruits, uh, so many, many Love things. Love but it. lock in and, and let the Lord lead you there. And, and let me say this, know who you're aligned with. Yeah. I aligned with Mike and Cindy in 1990. I am the blessings of that covenant have continued on that many years we're talking okay. that many years <laughs> because it's covenant from your alignment that will produce a harvest 